As you all may know, Overwatch's new hero Kiriko has finally been officially announced. Her kit slash abilities have been released along with a gameplay trailer. Although her name and unfinished short was leaked earlier this month, I can't help but be excited for this new character and all the battle pass information. So today we're going to take a deep dive into all this information given and see some of the good things Blizzard has decided to do and then some of the bad things or potentially problematic things. Let's start with Kiriko's kit. It consists of a teleportation ability where she teleports to nearby teammates in order to provide support. She also has an ability where she throws some sort of immortality-like field that when used provides a short invulnerability to teammates and gets rid of most negative effects like Ana's anti-nade. This seems like a very powerful ability that will make or break this character. However, we'll get into that later as she also has a healing ability as she is still a support character. This ability heat seeks to teammates and provides burst healing. And finally, her ultimate ultimate is what everyone saw with the fox, where she provides accelerated movement, attack speed, and lowered cooldowns for all allies within the ability. This, in my opinion, is a great and very balanceable ability. So if Kiriko comes out and her ult is a little bit overpowered, there are easy tweaks that can be made to fix that. Her main fire is a jet-like knife that she throws, nothing too crazy, and she's also been provided with a wall climb, as she has been said to have been training with the Shimada brothers. Overall, she's a very interesting character. A good bounce back from the lackluster Sojourn. Sojourn was a very cut and dry character, similar to Soldier, maybe a little too similar, and I just found her not that enjoyable. Although my aim is not that good, so I'll leave that up to you. However, for healer players, I feel Kiriko is a great addition. While possibly not the greatest heal provider, the utility that she may be able to provide with her abilities is likely going to be unmatched by any other healer character. That being said, her protection Suzu, knowing Blizzard, will will most definitely need to be nerfed into oblivion pretty much right off the bat. I also feel like Baptiste's immortality field was a mistake in the first place, so I don't know why they would force another similar ability into the game. I'm not a fan of the immortality her ability provides. While only for a short amount of time, if played alongside, let's say, Baptiste, this combo would be deadly and honestly probably not that fun to play against. The rest of her abilities are pretty cool and relatively harmless, so let's move on to the battle pass. The battle pass consists of 80 plus tiers of unlocked lockable material, and within it will be the new hero, Kiriko. She will be located at tier 55, more than halfway through the battle pass. This is interesting if you're a returning player from Overwatch 1, as you will automatically get her unlockable and playable right away. However, if you're a new player to Overwatch, you will not be able to unlock her unless you buy the premium pass. Only then will you get her right off the bat. Or, a different idea is that Blizzard suggested there would be a way that you can buy her in the shop. This is an interesting idea idea that has been explored by the likes of Apex Legends and to an extent Valorant. It obviously works for them, however, as a new player who has dabbled in Valorant, I would like to play all the heroes, obviously. However, there is something in common with all these games, and that is the learning curves. All three of these titles have steep and long learning curves that take lots of time, effort, and dedication to fully understand. Now, for new players, if developers were throwing 16 new heroes you have to learn on top of the learning curve, it gets a little tough, and in Overwatch's case, that's 33 new heroes, and that makes it a lot tougher to learn the game and its dynamics. In Valorant, it works because they lock more than half Half their roster for new players. It works because while their characters are interesting, that's not the main draw to the characters, like it is in Overwatch. The main draw is their utility they can pride in fights and the flexibility and whatnot. You don't really have counter picks in Valorant as you do in Overwatch. Overwatch is different to Valorant because they're only locking their new hero, so the people that are hyped about the new hero will have to first go through a paywall or play so much Overwatch that they unlock her naturally at tier 55. Blizzard can't lock the half their roster because their roster is entirely playable in Overwatch 1, and their characters are so lovable and the main draw of their game, to be entirely honest, that it would create an outrage. So this locking of Kiriko is most likely to profit off the hype of new characters, which I totally understand. However, punishing players who want to experience them, forcing them to pay for the battle pass, and or play an outrageous amount of Overwatch is not good, in my opinion. This to me is just another classic Blizzard cash grab. However, you know what? The price 
price of the Battle Pass being around $10, or for us Canadians, about $13, is a price point that is accessible to many, many people. This is a great thing that Blizzard has done right, and I very much applaud them for getting this part correct. Anyways, moving on to the other Battle Pass things, next up are skins. And all I have to say is, wow, these skins look amazing. Genji's Mythic skin is crazy cool. I don't know about the whole massively customizable part, though. I think massively is not the right word to use, and all you can do is mix up the colors and whatnot, but it's it's a cool skin, so who cares? These skins could honestly be the only thing in the Battle Pass, and I'd still fork over 10 to 50 $30, honestly, in an instant. The Battle Pass is a great idea, and I think it's a great fit for Overwatch as a whole and the community. No matter how you feel about Battle Passes, this is a good idea. And the greatest thing is, you are able to get Overwatch coins, their new currency used to buy the Battle Pass, just by playing the game and completing challenges. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did like the video, check out my other videos because they're a little different to this one. This is not normally what I do. But thanks for watching to the end. And please subscribe if you did enjoy because there might be more of these on their way. Who knows? I don't know. Anyways, see you later, guys.